Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 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 Hi everyone. Uh, so now we are up to the third uh, core competency, which will be systems-based uh, practice, which might be a little bit vague to some uh, interns or residents. So hopefully, I will uh, I'll do my best to try to clarify that for you a little bit. Okay, so to try to explain it a little bit, I took this from the ACGME uh, website. I think it's a very nice and helpful slide. Maybe I can explain it better with it. So. Uh, basically, um, for example, here uh, they are um, il il illustrating the concept of uh, the microsystems and the macro system, the smaller systems that the residents usually work in, and uh, the other uh, bigger systems that maybe the resident and fellow might not be directly exposed to, but uh, definitely you know they are affecting the the, the microsystem uh, flow. So for example here, um, you know, uh, taking into an example of an institution, that institution could be, you know, the hospital during the inpatient rotation, for example, or the outpatient clinic, so specialty clinic, the nursing home, if the resident uh, go to the nursing home, or any other rotation. So this is basically the institution. And then uh, this is a micro uh, system that usually the resident are directly exposed to. So for example here, um, this patient and family, they're coming into the hospital with acute chest pain. They've been seen in the emergency department. Yeah, they, might, they will be seen by a resident there. They might be seen by the cardiology follow because of the chest pain. They might be seen by an internal medicine uh, resident if they're doing an ED rotation. So this is a microsystem here. This is another microsystem, which is a cath lab, especially for you know cardiology follows, or even interns who or resident who is doing cardiology rotation, the internal medicine. Uh, that patient might end up in the CCU. Also, he, he or she might be seen here by the fellow or the internal medicine resident. And then if the patient is stable, then they can be transferred, you know, to the uh, uh, one of the beds in the main hospital well, where, where uh, he or she will be seen by the hospitalist and the hospital medicine um, uh, GME team. So in every one of these microsystems, you know, the resident will be evaluated and observed with the other clinical competencies that we talked about, medical knowledge, uh, patient care, communication skills, and all that. Uh, so basically, what um, system-based practice is, is to assure that the program provide the resident and the follow with the big picture of the other systems, the macro system that actually affecting their practice in the micro level. Of course, you know, we don't expect the resident to have like a really detailed knowledge about these systems. For example, there are some uh, regulatory bodies that can, you know, um, affect the marketing and, you know, regulatory environment of the hospital or other institutions. And this might include the JCAHO, the Joint Commission on Accreditation of um, Healthcare Organizations, which is basically the body that kind of regulates the hospital, the nursing homes, the pharmacies and surgical and other health centers. You know, of course, also the CM CMS, uh, the Centers uh, for Medicare and Medicaid Services, they also have a lot of regulation that affect the, our practice on daily level. And also the NCQA, which is the National Committee for Quality you know, Assurance. And, you know, this is just, some examples, um, a lot of the clinical quality metrics are really uh, uh, um, being uh, formulated and produced by these bodies, and definitely they affect um, the physician's uh, practice on daily, on daily basis. You know, there are other um, uh, regulatory bodies that tackle mostly the kind of the into intellectual environment um, associated with the healthcare, like the, for example, the um, um, uh, institution uh, for uh, healthcare improvement. And basically all this really is just uh, a way that the community is trying to assure that the healthcare system is, is being um, functioning in an appropriate way. Now, of course, there's a lot of uh, controversies and a lot of discussions about all of these regulations, whether they are like really helpful or not, you know, bad or good. This is not really, um, uh, this is a different topic, but I'm just trying to uh, demonstrate and illustrate to the uh, medical student and resident who's coming to the, uh, you know, uh, going into training that they are expected to be 
aware of all these macro systems that really gonna affect the micro system that they, they are working on. And especially with the time of their graduation and especially if they wanna do their in practice, you know, if they uh, have a good grasp of that during their residency training and fellowship training, I think that will make them a better uh, physicians to kind of tackle all those challenges and difficulties when they uh, get outside to the real world and try to, you know, practice uh, med medicine the way they want to and hopefully will be the, uh, the, the way that the community want to. So um, I'm hoping that this clarify the picture a little bit to you guys. So uh, having said that, the, um, then some of the subcompetencies associated with uh, system-based uh, practice, as you might expect, will include the uh, you know patient safety and uh, quality improvement. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, resident will be able to move from level one where they can demonstrate knowledge of common uh, patient safety events and uh, uh, know how to uh, report them, and they know uh, the basics of uh, quality improvement metrics to a level where they can really conduct analysis and hopefully deep analysis of. Uh, patient safety events and offering uh, error preven uh, prevention strategies and they can develop, conduct and analyze, you know, quality uh, 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 improvement uh, projects in a, an efficient way. So um, basically the, uh, the, uh, the, the resident will be expected to be able to identify patient safety issues and work, you know, to, to, solve, to solve them. Uh, for example, for me as hospital, is this really key when I'm looking at the performance of my resident in the inpatient rotation? Is if there any um, an you know incident or an issue that uh, comes up or brought up by uh, a staff member that uh, involves patient safety? You know, I look deep into that and try to kind of use my team to dissect the problem and try to see what happened, what went wrong, and how we can prevent this from happening in the future. So that's really a very key skill. And, you know, of course, you have to know that, again, the uh, microsystem and the microsystem that you're working on to be able to uh, uh, solve the problem. And uh, hopefully, every resident will be able to participate and understand the principles uh, of quality improvement and uh, conduct uh, some uh, quality improvement projects. Really, ideally, the resident should be able to finish uh, a really good and solid quality uh, improvement project by the time of their graduation. Uh, but um, at, the, at, the, at the least, that they should be really aware of these basic principles and start some of the process of uh, quality improvement uh, project. Some of the programs are actually required um, each resident before graduation to have uh, completed or at least uh, be part of uh, a finished quality improvement project during their residency training. And, you know, the uh, m and the Morbidity and Mortality Conferences, you know, this is also tackled to the patient safety issue and, and or residents are expected to participate in that and be mindful uh, about that and when they have a case that they fit um, or they think that uh, uh, will fit the goals of the M&M, they, they will be able to present that case and uh, other, you know, similar conferences as well where they tackle the same thing and be able to discuss issues related to patient safety. And another important uh, sub-competency is the system navigation for patient-centered care, and that's really key. Uh, for me as hospitalists, this can maybe like directly uh, affect in my practice with the residents. So basically, uh, for level one, uh, residents should be able to demonstrate knowledge of care coordination uh, between the uh, different parties that are taking care of the uh, patient together with the resident, and also identify key elements uh, for safe and effective transition of care and hands off to um, be able to uh, you know uh, migrate to level four or five, where they can model effective coordination of patient-centered care and advocate for safe and effective transition of, uh, of care and hands-off and be really um, very efficient and uh, very effective in that process. So um, uh, resident will be expected to be able to collaborate to assure safe patient discharge and uh, care transition. Um, um, for example, when they're like um, uh, on call and they are signing out to the night team, you know, this process is really key. And um, a lot of programs, they pay a lot of attention to that. 
And for me personally, as a hospitalist, you know, uh, uh, of course, pay, um, safe discharge and care transition is really key element of hospital medicine. So uh, we will look closely into that and uh, try to uh, figure out the best way f to kind of minimize the transition of care and do it in a very effective way and make sure that, you know, all the important information will be transmitted from team to another team. And that's also true for, uh, especially true for uh, graduate medical education or the teaching teams, because uh, there might be a lot of interruptions uh, for care because of the other obligations that, you know, the resident um, need to do uh, during their training, not just patient care. Uh, also, they uh, hopefully be able to collaborate to assure affordable therapy and plan for their patients. So that's really key. I really expect my resident to be mindful about the affordability of the medication that they prescribe and the tests that they require, and uh, especially at the time of discharge, to make sure that the patient will be able to take these important medications and uh, be able to kind of um, uh, uh, be seen by the specialist or the physician that they need to see by the time of discharge. That's, that's really key. And then of all, also hopefully you'll be able to identify potential conflicts of interest between you know, patient and their health, uh, health you know, care system. So basically we, we always try to advocate for the patient and sometimes there might be some um, conflict of interest between some uh, regulations that are, um, might be uh, not ideal for the particular patient. So always try to come up with a solution that maybe in the middle in between that can you know, serve uh, both uh, the patient uh, care side and at the same time the uh, resources and regulation that we are working under. And then uh, lastly is uh, hopefully the resident will be able to advocate on the patient's behalf to help them ne uh, negotiate the healthcare system, especially patients who are um, under uh, um, in uh, the patient who are like they don't have insurance or they work in uh, underserved uh, areas or they don't really um, have a better system to kind of help them uh, tackle their the medical issue that they have. So this could be challenging cases that physicians and um, uh, medical residents um, have to take care of. So this is also part of system-based practice. Uh, rather than being aware of the microsystems that they work under, uh, that knowledge will definitely help the resident be able to tackle these uh, difficulties and be able to effectively manage their patients in these difficult situations. Uh, the last sub-competency here in the system-based practice is the physician role in the healthcare systems. Basically, at level one, resident should be able to identify key components uh, and big components of the healthcare system and describe basic, you know, health uh, payment systems. Uh, level four or five, by the time of the graduation, hopefully they'll be able to manage various components of the complex healthcare system to provide effective patient care and advocate for patient needs with consideration of the limitations uh, of each patient's payment uh, model. Um, so uh, hopefully the resident I will be able to kind of uh, identify the basic or have basic knowledge of insurance policies and structures, uh, the PPO, the HMO, the government versus the government run versus the private run uh, insurance and all um, on all that. Um, um, this is really, I think most of the programs, they do provide some lecture that maybe uh, hopefully we'll be able to teach the resident about these systems and of course, um, during their uh, daily uh, practice, you know, they can learn a lot uh, about that from, for example, case managers and social workers who are uh, more aware of these uh, regulations than the, than the, the uh, interns and the medical residents. So uh, definitely should take advantage of that and ask questions when things uh, related to the uh, insurance policies are not clear. But you should always keep that in mind, you know, uh, when you're taking care of your patients. And hopefully also they'll be having a, a really a basic knowledge of how physicians and hospitals are paid and how this can affect the patient care and practice. Uh, for example, the fee to uh, for service versus the value-based payment methods, uh, the hospital DRG, which I talked about briefly in the lecture about uh, uh, documentations and uh, also mentioning documentation here, of course, which uh, affect the uh, billing 
uh, and the billing affect the you know uh, hospital and hospitals payment so uh, also the the residents are expected to have a basic knowledge about all these principles and how these can affect uh, their practice and how they can uh, uh, navigate that and hopefully um, be even be able to make some suggestions and for, for improvement uh, of that system. Now how uh, programs will evaluate the residents on this uh, competency and sub-competencies? You know, again, as we mentioned before, evaluation uh, methods, unfortunately, they're not really perfect, but there are different ways uh, that, you know, uh, the resident can be observed and uh, given feedback about this uh, skill. Uh, of course, you know, this can happen through um, some basic testing about quality uh, improvement, knowledge and assessment, uh, audit are, are very helpful in that regard as well. Um, also the, you know, multi-source feedback from, from nursing, from case management, social work about their interaction with the resident, uh, some forms that can um, uh, tackle certain skills uh, can be given to faculty and subspecialists to uh, evaluate the resident for uh, case-based models uh, or modules. If the pro program can provide that, that would be great as well. And um, specifically, uh, the cases or modules will specifically be uh, created in a way that they test the awareness of the resident regarding the, um, the financial system, for example, or the regulation or the macro system in general. Uh, charge uh, stimulated uh, recall is also another way. Uh, direct observation, of course, uh, also is another way. So uh, basically, um, again, it's not really, it might not be like a, um, a straightforward uh, sub-competency or, com or core competency, but still, I think it's very important and uh, I think the resident interest need to be aware of it and be uh, uh, able to uh, uh, get it to a next level uh, and be able to, by the time of graduation, to really master this um, core competency.